Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Travis. This is the first video of the new year. This is the second video in the series on this 1960 El Camino that my dad and me picked up a few weeks ago. It had no motor and no tranny. It was just pretty much, it was abandoned. We have a 327 Ford, a 350 Turbo that we're gonna put back in it. In this video, we're gonna be doing some brake work, wheel cylinders and the master cylinder, and we're gonna be doing engine work on the 327, taking some of it apart, resealing it, putting it back together, painting it, getting it ready to mate to the transmission and put in. Basically, it's gonna be a lot of grunt work. We have the e brake holding us on, anything like that. That spider's still alive. Oh boy. See these shoes. Relined by something R A. I don't know. Maybe if I clean that up, I can get like a date code or something. Ah, uh, kind of hard to see it. Relined by does that say Ray Bestus? I don't know. Uh, I can't really decipher what that date code two twenty eight. I don't know. P G R S C C. Uh, maybe somebody knows what those mean, but I'm not sure.
So we just got the upper A arm off, these shims, you see those shims, those are extremely important and you need to keep track of how many there are on each bolt. Show a picture of them on that side. Mm-hmm. Because if you come over here, you can see this one, see the bolt and the nut and you have shims here and shims here. Now what this does is angles this pushing this forward or backwards well it pushes it side to side really and that changes the angle of your tire to give you your caster I don't, and yeah your caster and camber if you don't know the measurements and you don't have a um what is that what do they call it an alignment rack alignment lift then if you put those shims on wrong your tires are going to wear unevenly they're going to wear all jacked up so since we don't know the measurements and we don't have those the, we don't have a rack putting those back in the same spot is extremely important when people say things aren't built like they used to be, this is a perfect example, this upper A-arm. See that? You can unbolt that and take it out and put another one in and it has a greaser on it. You know, most of the new ones are just pressed in. You gotta unpress them and press a new one in. Most of the time you just buy a new A-arm, they're not bolt in, and they don't even have a greaser on them. It's all sealed up, you can't service them, nothing. Once it's done, it's done. This is better. And don't let it hit you in the eyes or anything because it's going to be hot. Get the ones on either side. No. Oh. Well, this jack is underneath it. Well, I know it. My dang hands all greasy. Can't put my hands anywhere where there's not a load of grease. There, I got it. I got it. So obviously we're doing these bushings. You can see there's nothing left. They're dry rotted. You know, they need to be done. That one, these are 60 year old. You know, you know what I'm saying? There's old Boo Boo. Someone in the comments asked what our dog's name was. His name is Boo. He's old. He can't hear or see no more. He's about 15, 16. Yeah. Had him since I was in third grade. For what it's worth, we're gonna pressure wash these off, clean them up, paint them.
it's completely toasted. Came out a little easier than what I thought. Sometimes you have to get violent. Oh man, you got to cave them in. So, where's our bar? This might be successful or it might not be successful. We grab something like that. Oh, YouTube. <laughs> Saw a YouTube guy. He, he said, here, this is what happens when you use this. This is good stuff. And this sec the first second he had it, and then the next minute he had it all over his, his whole hands was that color. See what I mean? Why is it going? Yeah, they get harder and harder and harder and farther it goes in. Going in? Come here. I think it's in. Yeah. Let's see if I can put it on there without getting. Yeah, I think I felt it. Yeah. There you go. Let me show if these come out nice as them other ones did. I'm just looking at them. They don't look too friendly. You're going to need to get sideways with it. Push. About time. It's in. 
We got both the bushings and all four of the A-frames, control arms. Spared you the details of the other side. It was just as ridiculous. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to clean this off on both sides. You know, scrape it off, wire wheel it off so we can paint this black. And we'll spray paint these black before we put them back on. So while our control arms and A-arms are drying and whatnot, our springs, instead of sitting there and just watching paint dry, we're going to go ahead and dig into this motor. Like I said, I think in the previous video, uh, we want to freshen this up. We know the motor runs. We ran it last video. There's some things that we want to address on it. Uh, the oil pan, I know you can't see it from there, but the drain plug uh, was like a rubber drain plug and you know that kind of looked fishy. And come to find out, it's completely stripped out on the inside. It's not usable at all. So that's going to have to be switched out. We got another oil pan from it, uh, got it from our neighbor. So we're getting that oil pan ready to put on. We want to put another timing chain cover gasket on it. But, you know, when we take this timing chain cover off, we'll be able to look at that chain and see if it's worth anything, see if it's reusable. We'll be able to get a good look at it. Now the intake, are probably going to do the gasket on the intake because there's like four different kind of bolts on this intake, different sizes, different kinds. There's silicone all over this intake. I mean, it's just, you know, it's just, you know, probably put valve cover gaskets on it. And while the oil pan's dropped and the timing chain covers off and the intake's off, we'll kind of be able to get a good look at the internals of the motor and see if anything is running amok in there. We know it runs, but, you know, sometimes you just find things that you don't want to find whenever you dig into stuff that it might have ran initially, but if you keep running it, you might have ran into a problem. You might find that when you take some of this apart, but hopefully not. Let's go ahead and start buzzing some of this stuff off, huh?
So there was about nine kinds of goofy holding that intake on. You had an Allen head, you had whatever those are, star bolts, star bits, I don't know, 9 sixteenths and 11 sixteenths, just ridiculous. And there's just as much or more silicone, actually I'd say twice as much silicone as actual gasket, you know, crazy. But, what is that? Is that a dent in that thing? Uh, I'm not sure what that is, but I mean, really, it doesn't look all too terrible. Uh, you know, sometimes you open this up and see sludge, sludge in those galleys, but I'm not seeing any sludge, not too bad. Um, it might have a lot of miles on it, you can tell because of this little surprise. So it does have quite a bit of miles on it, but it doesn't look like it was just ran through and put up wet. When we turn it over to do the rear main seal, we're going to take a rod cap off, what that looks like, to see how worn it is. But yeah, so far, not too bad. Right, so it is Wednesday now. We have the A-arms and the control arms painted up. They're dry now. We're trying to get this engine set in the car by Friday, which means we have to get all the A-arms and control arms back on, springs in and compressed and all that bolted back together. We got to get this engine put back together, but we ran into a problem. So remember how yesterday, there's like 10 different kinds of bolts holding this intake on. Well, they had wallered out the holes and stripped them out. So we have to drill out, there's 12 holes, probably eight of them to 10 of them are, are not usable. So we're gonna have to drill them out, helicoil them, which is basically just, it's a time burglar. I mean, it's just, uh, that's, set, that's setting us back. Dad's gonna drill these holes out and helicoil them. And I'm going to go ahead and start putting the arms back on the front suspension to kind of tag team it so that we can get this engine hopefully put in by Friday. And, what do you think, boo? What's yeah. your opinion? Well, I don't know. I just want a snack. <laughs> <laughs> just give me a snack. That's all I want. Here, these are the holes where the bolts go in to hold the intake on and they're supposed to be 3 8 bolts and you can see I'm just putting my drill bit right through that. I mean, they stripped these threads out absolutely to the max. You know, these are not even usable, so. I know that a lot of guys maybe have, haven't done this. We'll run you through one. I won't run you through all 10 of them. It's pretty extreme to have to do 10, and I would say that probably it would be recommended to replace the heads, but the heads were good. On a 3 8 16, you drill it out 25 64 and then you run the helical tap through it.
coil on your installing tool. Unscrew it. Then there's a little tab on the bottom. You're supposed to knock off. Ow. And there's your installed 3 8 bolt. Good enough. Only got eight to go. Okay, now this is the tricky part of putting all this back together. We got our upper A arm and our control arm down here and our spring has to go up in the frame and in this slot. Obviously these are extremely hard to compress and there's a lot of spring tension in them. And so we're trying to finagle our way into some sort of system to get these in there. Kind of like. Just a reminder too, I have an entire list of shop essential tools that dad and me use in our videos in the description of this video. Uh, links to the tools on Amazon if you want to pick up some tools for yourself or your own projects. Just a comprehensive list. All right, you guys see that right here? See that? There you go. Come on. There we go. Got it all tightened up, cotter pin in, good to go. The key to this, I guess, you can see I have a bolt going through the shock mount here and here. And the point of that is, is when I put this spring in here, the ring of it's kind of back here, and you don't want it to, it's kind of at, an, at a weird, goofy angle, and you don't want it to just fly out. It'll pop out of the bottom. So put these bolts here so that if it tries to pop out while it's under pressure, it can't do that. Once you jack it up enough, you can get your screwdriver in there and kind of just work it in. Go ahead. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Wait a minute. There we go. Better? A little bit, but... Need to do more? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. So I was turning that spring because if you see in there, you see that groove where that hole is? The end of that spring actually goes down in a groove in this 
arm here and you can see that divot in there and uh, you want to just make sure that ring that last ring goes in that divot so this whole assembly is together spring and all on both sides now we have to tighten up these bushings I know it's kind of hard to see because we painted all this black but this is steel part of the part of the a-frame this is rubber and this is a washer and this tightens up against there and it pushes well squishes that rubber see how it's squishing it and then it oh yeah it bottoms out everything is together and tight the bushings are tight all the bolts are tight now we got to move our attention to this engine Dad's draining out the coolant. We're about to flip it over. All the helicoils are in. We had to do 11 out of the 12? 11. 11? Yeah. See where that little thread ends? 11 out of 12. Look at this. I'll show you something crazy. We used the helicoils out of this box. Dad said he used to deal with this, these people Big A service line when he was working out in California in the early 90s. So Dad's been carrying around these helicoils for what 30 years <laughs> 32 years 32 years he's been waiting to use these and he used all 10 on this motor so that's old money spent baby we just did the rear main seal the main cap bearing looked all right there was some wear on it but it wasn't down to the copper we're taking one of the rod caps off now um, see how that looks okay. come on hold on hold on Oh, bearing's still on there. Not bad, not bad. So, good. So, we got some parts in the mail today. Um, we have our engine wiring harness kit. And what else did we get in the mail? Engine wiring harness kit? Yeah. Anyway, some other odds and ends. But we're waiting on the rest of our brake parts. We ordered wheel cylinder rebuild kits shoes we just decided to go for shoes for all four wheels instead of just trying to hobnob and keep a couple and you know we're just going to do them all because one of them had a crack one of them had a big old crack can't have that i'm going to rebuild the front wheel cylinders on the car because um, these kind of have a weird design where they're bolted to the backing plate this you know bracket here it's all one piece so just leave it on there and do it Oh, that's not bad at all. That's, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that didn't come out too bad. Go ahead and hone them out right here. Spray this down with some soapy water be to kind of dilute that brake fluid because uh, out of all the fluids you have in a car, uh, brake fluid is the only one that will, without a doubt, eat your paint. If it, it will just, you just peel it right off if, if, it, if you let it sit on there. So Sometimes I forget to say it, but if you're liking these videos, don't forget to subscribe. Me and Dad have a lot of good content coming for you guys this year. We appreciate all of your guys' support, uh, your views, comments, feedback, everything. Maybe if I put it in the cap or something, maybe that'll help me out. That black down in there is pitting, um, where fluid could get past, but that's not really that bad. So yeah, that's totally reusable. We'll get the kits and we'll slap it back together. No, not bad at all. Are they Delco? I don't know. So I went ahead and popped the master cylinder off while we're doing all of our brake stuff. And I just love that. Moraine, Delco Moraine Production Division, uh, Dayton, Ohio, USA. I, I love how they just stamped it right on there for all to see. Usually the struggle with these is that there's nowhere to pound it out at like you can the wheel cylinders. You can just knock it out. So normally what you have to do 
is you have to get a screwdriver that has an end that kind of serrades out big enough to catch in this hole. When you pound it into that aluminum, it'll grab and you can yank it out. So we'll see just how stuck it is. Very stuck. Oh my gosh. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. It's starting to move inside. Let's bust this cap off. pretty rusty and pitted in there. Oh well, there you go. You can see what the inside looks like. Right there. Oh brother, where art thou? So that slide is lodged in there like you wouldn't believe. So we got another trick up our sleeve going to tap it and once we get some threads in there we can put a bolt in there and yank it out. side. You gotta put that wood down further because it's dried out. It's wet or something. Here, set it against the table. Hold on. Let me do it with... That's a bad one. Hold on. Let me pull. <laughs> There you go, buddy. This is what you call dedication. Yeah. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> this one might need a couple passes. We got our new timing chain and our gears put on. We got our timing chain gasket on. We got our timing chain cover on. And we put our seal in it. And so we're ready to slap it back on. There you go. I dropped those. Hold on. It fell off of there. So 
we're about to set this oil pan on and this is a four piece oil pan gasket. You always put just a little bit of silicone where these pieces meet just to kind of help it seal at the points where they contact. We got our preliminary groundwork done to set this intake on. We got all the gasket material and 10 pounds of silicone cleaned off of it. Our new Felpro gasket's on. This is a four piece gasket set. Two here, two here. We got two little dabs of silicone at each end. Intake's cleaned up. Everything's helicoiled. Real easy. Has to be exact. So this week, got all the front suspension took apart, fixed, rebuilt, put back together, ready for the brakes. We were gonna put the brakes back together, but all the stuff didn't come in the mail. We don't have all the shoes, the wheel cylinder rebuild kits. That's really what's holding us up. That'll be going on next week. We got the 327 pretty much ready to put in the car. New oil pan, new oil pan gasket, new water pump gaskets, new valve cover gaskets, new brass freeze plugs, new rear main seal, timing chain kit, timing chain cover gasket, fuel pump gasket, intake gasket, painted up and looking snazzy. 11 helicoils. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, a, and 11 helicoils. We've never had to do that before. Next week we should definitely be able to get the transmission mounted to the engine, set in there, and hopefully running and maybe driving under its own power. The brakes won't be too difficult to get put back together. All the wheel cylinders and master cylinder are ready to receive the new kits. It might be able to move under its own power next week. I think, I think so. Yeah. It should be able to move under its own power. I mean, I don't see why not unless we run into some unexpected boondoggle. Thank you guys for watching. Dad and me always appreciate it. Thank you guys for 30,000 subscribers. Thank you for the feedback and the comments. We're always reading those. We're always reading those and replying in there. And we'll see you guys in the next one.